Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar on leader application using Comsol Multiphysics. Today's agenda includes a brief introduction to Comsol Multiphysics, uh, some words on the ray optics module, what it is, what can it be used for, a uh, demo model, a simplified one and a more complex model will be demonstrated, and then the end I will summarize today's presentation. My name is Arpad Forberger and I'm an application engineer at Gamax Laboratory Solutions LTD and today we are going, going to look at uh, leader application and how to detect objects in a ray optics simulation. I will walk us through some models to give you a chance to see the software up close and see how it might help you in your work. Comsa is a multi-physics modeling simulation and application design environment where all of the steps of a simulation are integrated into one user interface from the initial setup to the solvers to post-processing to putting together a custom-built application. A COMSOL model allows you to couple together physical effects the way they are in the real world which we refer to as multiphysics. Once you have completed your simulation the software also allows you to create a customized app from the model which enables you to deploy the analysis capabilities to collaborators, customers, or even colleagues around the world. This is our product suite. We have add on products that can be combined with the Comsol Multiphysics Core package to enable simulation of specific physics phenomena across a range of application areas. These can all be combined with each other. We have modules for electrical fluid, heat, mechanical, acoustics and chemical simulations as well as several multi-purpose modules and tools for interfacing with external software. Comsol is very flexible, it contains many predefined physics interfaces but also allows you to define, to define your own custom physics and equations. And today we are going to take into a look to the ray optics module and the capabilities and features. What is the ray optics module? The ray optics module can be used to model electromagnetic wave propagation in systems in which the wavelength is much smaller than the smallest geometric detail in the model. The electromagnetic waves are treated as rays that can be propagated through homogeneous or graded media. Because it is not necessary to resolve the wavelength, with a finite element mesh, ray trajectories can be computed over long distances at a low computational cost. Ray can also undergo reflection and refraction at the boundaries between different media. The ray optics module contains a variety of boundary conditions, including combinations of specular and diffuse reflection. Rays can be released from within domains, from boundaries, or at a uniform grid of points. Specialized release features are also available for modeling solar radiation and for releasing reflected or refracted rays from an illuminated surface. Dedicated post-processing tools offer you, may, you many ways to analyze ray trajectories, evaluate expressions over many rays, and even visualize interference patterns and monochromatic aberrations. Key applications that can be used for stresses, temperature changes and other physical phenomena can often affect ray trajectories either by deforming the geometry of the domain or affecting the refractive indices within the domains. Similarly, high-powered rays can generate significant heat sources that affect the temperature field and may cause notable thermal stresses. The ray optics module is fully capable of simulating such multi-physics applications. Accumulator features on domains and boundaries can be used to create dependent variables that store information about the rays in the corresponding domain or boundary mesh elements. Specialized versions of these features for computing deposited ray power in domains due to ray attenuation or at boundaries due to ray absorption are also available. Using these accumulator features it is possible to set up unidirectional or bidirectional couplings between the ray trajectories 
and the dependent variables created by other physics interfaces. This can be used, for example, to create self-consistent models of thermal lensing effects. Today's demo model will be used for a simple 2D geometry. We will have an inlet that will be used as a source of a radar, uh, let's say in front of a car, and we will use a detector to count the distance between the source and an object. And the simplified version will be seen here, so we will see the animation. So on the left hand side, we will see the detectors and the source where we will release the rays and the obstacle will be on the right hand side and with the advanced features we can exactly detect the distance of the object from the source. So if we go to Comsol Motor Physics we can set up this model in a 2D domain quite easily. So we select the model wizard and we go for a 2D space dimension and from the optics domain we select geometrical optics. From the study node we select ray tracing but it can be a time dependent solver or a bidirectional coupled ray tracing. For simplicity we go for this ray tracing study node. We will import some parameters, that's easiest for us. So this is the power of the laser, the wavelength, how many rays we will be using at the inlet and what's the cone angle of the source. From the geometry we will simply create some Bezier polygons, one for the road, it's a linear segment that starts from 0 to 10 meters. Okay, this will indicate our road condition and we will set up another one that we use as a source. So we will release the rays at this point. So it's at 1.5 meters at the desired height with the same 1.5 through 0.41 meters. So this little segment will be used as the source. So we duplicate this one and we set up the detector where we will count the number of rays and those positions. Okay, so beneath the inlet there is another small segment with setting up as a wall condition. Okay, we will draw a simple rectangle as an obstacle with the desired width of 2.2 meters, with the height of uh, 1.4 meters, and locate at 6 meters at the x direction. So this is our geometry. So we will have a source, so we will release rays at the top segment. We will count them with all the reflections on the bottom segment. And we will have this obstacle on the right hand side located at 6 meters. So the distance between the source and an obstacle is 4.5 meters. So everything goes right, so we will see this distance in the results section. Going to the physics, we can remove the obstacle because we don't need to mesh those domains, only the edges must be meshed. And we need to set up that we don't want secondary rays, but we want to compute intensity and power of course with the phase and we need to count the reflections in order to reduce computational time we enable this feature so we will disregard those rays that reflect two or more times without hitting the detector ray properties the wavelength is in a parameter section which is LAN, so if we go back there, we will see the wavelength is 905 nanometers. Okay, so this is our wavelength for our laser source, and now we can set up the boundary conditions for the road and an obstacle. So this will be used as uh, diffuse scattering. 
you have more options you can set up specular reflection disappear pass through whatever in the later model you will see more of these boundary conditions but for here we will set up diffuse scattering and we will set up an expression to disable those not reflected rays number of reflections it's negative then disappear this is the internal variable this is the number of reflections so otherwise they will disappear so this goes for the road and obstacle then we can set up other boundary condition for the source as an inlet condition simple inlet we can zoom in and select this little edge so the number of rays per release let's say it's 50 the ray direction vector is conical with the cone angle in the normal direction so in the normal direction is 1 and the cone angle is a parameter called cone angle it's in the parameters list cone angle which is 5 degrees okay so we release the rays here under this cone angle okay and then we need to count the reflected rays so we set up another wall condition below the inlet and the primary ray condition is 1 okay and we can set up a deposited ray power to count and store the ray status data here okay so this is the detector okay and then we can go to the ray tracing solver node and instead of time steps we can specify the maximum path length so we can solve for 10 meters and store the solution at every 0.5 meters okay so this is the solution here so we have the ray trajectories and what we wanted to see that between the source on the left hand side and the obstacle on the right hand side so we have four and a half meters so we should see those numbers in the results node so it's a global plot it's a 1d global plot uh, to plot the intensity of the refracted rays global and we can go to the predefined features geometrical optics accumulated variables integral of this variable and instead of time we want to see on the horizontal axis the distance so we can replace this variable with a custom expression c const over 2 which will be in meters okay and that's it so we will see that indeed at 4.5 meters we have a very high intensity ratio it means that the refracted rays come from an obstacle that is 4.5 meters from the source so we get back the results that we wanted to look what we wanted to see that indeed the obstacle on the right hand side is 4.5 meters away from the source so with these small setups you can set up leader applications with simple inlet conditions and wall conditions with the so-called deposited ray power sub feature that's easy to use and from the mesh side as you can see we have only edge meshes it's pretty simple it's pretty easy to do there is no need to mesh the inside domain so the air domain and what is not in the computational domain there is no finite element mesh and for the more complicated model which can be seen here so we will see some car uh, it has detectors and sources on each side and then the front and the back we can see some obstacles we see a pedestrian we see some buildings and we can see some car on the right hand side 
and from each detector we can see the exact distance of those obstacles from our sources so the configuration is the same but with more complex geometries and with more uh, boundary conditions so if we look into the physics node we can see all the boundary conditions that are set up here so we have the same geometrical optics physics interface and we have some domains and some boundaries which is more important so we have different conditions for the bodies of the car which means diffuse scattering for the human body we have the same setup for the car glass we have set up pass through boundary conditions so the rays can pass through the glasses for the license plates we have specular reflection and we have sources sources on the front of the car on the right hand side uh, on the walls and at the rear of the car and of course we have the same the text doors at the front of the car on the right hand side and the left hand side and at the rear and that's how we can use these boundary conditions this is the finite element mesh we have these uh, domain meshes but the inside the air is not meshed it's not necessary to hear and what's the most important is to see the results from the de detectors so this is for the front so we have three of those detectors at the front and the left hand side in the middle is the blue and on the right hand side so we can see that each of these three detectors can detect the obstacles at different distances on the right hand side we can see some obstacle on at three meters which is the car on the right hand side and the building and the front and the left detector can detect the body in front of the car at two meters and roughly at 2.5 meters and the same goes for the right detectors on the right hand side we have only the uh, building so if we go back to ge geometry on the right hand side there is only the building which is roughly at 3 meters if we go to the right detectors indeed we have a high jump in intensity of 3 meters so the right detectors can see the obstacle on the right hand side the same goes for the left detectors that can be seen here in a few seconds so we will see some obstacles seen on the left hand side that's another building and some part of the reflected domains on the left hand side and at the rear because there is nothing behind the car if we go back to the geometry so at the rear behind the car there is nothing there are no obstacles at the rear detectors we have zero variables so nothing is detected as expected so if we go back to the animation which is quite nice to see how these leader applications perform we can see the full animation how the rays hit the bodies and the obstacles and in previously you have seen at the intensity plots at which meters are those obstacles are detected so the stray optics module can detect multiple objects with different variables with different geometries in real world geometries in real world simulations so this can be used for this so called leader application so this wraps up my demo so if you are interested in trying out console motor physics with the trial version or you would like to see more in this uh, ray optics module you can contact us at any time or you can go to our website to see what's available and what can be done with Comsol Multiphysics. You can see some events and videos, you can record, you can see the recorded webinars and you can uh, see user stories and the model gallery as well. So if you have any questions you can reach out at gamexlabsol.com or at our email addresses. I thank you for your time and see you at our next webinar.